Welcome back, anatomy students. We're going to talk about muscles of the arms. We're going to talk about the origin, the insertion, and the function of each of the muscles, as that's what we've done in every other lecture. Remember, the origin is basically the beginning of the muscle. That's on the immovable bone. No action happens there. It's like the anchor. The insertion is where the action actually takes place. So you might think of it as the end of the muscle. Then the function, well, it's easy to think you need to memorize all these things, origin, insertion, and function, but you can actually reason it all out. So knowing that action is produced by pulling on a bone, and action is produced at the insertion, we can just draw a line from the origin of a muscle to the insertion, pull that insertion toward the origin, and see what it does to the bones. So we can really think it through, and it's not a memorized piece of information, it's a usable piece of information. The same thing with your origin and insertion, you don't have to memorize them. Action is produced at the insertion. So what I, wherever that insertion is, function is happening there. So if I were to ask what or where would the insertion be for the muscle that moves the forearm, it's moving the forearm, it's grabbing hold of the forearm and pulling it, so it has to insert on the forearm. Origins you can think through because the joint that is affected is crossing between the origin and insertion. So if my elbow joint is affected, I know the origin is above it and the insertion is below it. So if it flexes the forearm, the origin is going to be on my humerus. It's going to be on the bone above it. So really you can think your way through that origin, insertion, and function instead of trying to memorize those facts. That's too many facts to memorize. So let's get going. So we're going to start talking about the bicep. That's probably the one that we're most familiar with. We have more than one bicep, so we no longer can just say, my biceps. You have a bicep brachii, you have a biceps femoris. Bicep simply tells you that there's two points of origin. So it doesn't just start in one place, but it starts in two. So up here, this is the bicep muscle here, and you can see there's two points of origin. So these are two special features we learned when we named parts of the scapula. So you have your coracoid process here and your glenoid cavity here or glenoid fossa. So that's where the muscle begins. I can see where it's headed, right? So I can see the insertion point. So the proximal end of the radius, so the point nearest the attachment. So on my thumb side of my forearm, I have an insertion point for my bicep muscle. Now if I pull that insertion, toward the origin, what happens? It moves my forearm toward my humerus. So it flexes the forearm, and flexing means to decrease an angle at a joint. It doesn't mean to show your muscles. Although, when I do show my muscles, I decrease an angle at a joint. So the, the term flexion is a little bit misused in that we normally use it to say, show me your muscle or contract a muscle, but what it really means is that it's decreasing an angle. So it flexes the forearm and it causes a rotation of the palm outward, so a supination. So this is connected to the radius bone, which is a lateral bone. So when I, I wish I could show you. Um, so when I pull on that, it turns my forearm over. So I'm pulling on the thumb side of my hand. You see, it turns it over. So you have supination and pronation. Supination means to put your palm sides up. So I think of holding a bowl of soup. If I am holding a bowl of soup, I am supinated. So my palms are up. The brachioradialis is a synergist to the biceps brachii. Remember, that means that the two muscles work together to perform a similar function. So you would call the biceps brachii the primary mover, because it's mostly responsible. And then you have the brachioradialis following. Brachioradialis is named according to its origin and its insertion. So remember, lad snore. The O is for origin and insertion. 
So just knowing, knowing that, let's go back to, I don't have to memorize all of those facts. Brachioradialis tells me it originates on the brachii, my upper arm, and it inserts on the radius, the bone on my thumb side. So this is like the bulky muscle in your forearm. So Popeye had a really big brachioradialis. That's what I remember. So it originates on the distal third of the humerus, and you don't need all those specific details. It originates on the humerus, and it inserts on the radius. And then again, since it's a synergist, and since we're pulling on the origin toward the insertion, when I pull that radius towards the brachii, it causes a flexion at the forearm. The triceps brachii is the opposite. So what does that mean? It means it's an antagonist, right? So here's another clue you can use for learning these facts. All of your flexors are on the anterior side of your arm. So everything on the front of your arm decreases in angle, closes your fingers, your wrist, your elbow. Everything on the back side of your arm, the posterior side, is an extender. So it opens your fingers, your hands, your elbow. The triceps brachii is found on the back of your arm, so it's an extender. So triceps tells us N, number of origins in lad snore, has three points of origin. Glenoid cavity, similar to the bicep, and two posterior points on your humerus. It inserts on the allocranum fossa, or I'm sorry, allocranum process. So remember, that's that bone in your elbow. So you might think of it as your funny bone, and you might think of it simply as your elbow. But that's the end of my ulna, so the ulna's on the pinky side. That's that piece that connects with the um, brachii, or the humerus. So what happens when I pull on that olecranon process here toward the backside of my armpit, basically, right? So when I pull that, it straightens my arm. So that's an extender. And an extension is an increase in an angle at a joint. So again, back to the front side of the arm. We have flexor carpes. What do you think they're going to flex? Your wrist. So that would be like this. So flexing your wrist. Extending your wrist would be putting your hand down. So you have a flexor carpi ulnaris, you have a flexor carpi radialis. So there's more than one. I'm just generalizing here. In the forearm, it is hard to tell the difference between all the individual muscles, so I'm just picking one out to show you. Um, so here we have the flexor carpi ulnaris on the pinky side, and you would assume the flexor carpi radialis would be over here above the radius. So it inserts on various metacarpals of the hand. So when it pulls those metacarpals toward the forearm, it flexes the wrist. So it flexor carpi. Okay. Now when you when I show you the next one, the flexor digitorum, it's going to be difficult to tell the difference between the two of them when you get a diagram that includes them both. So what I want you to look at is the tendon right here. So these are skinny little muscles. This tendon, you'll see pretty much ending at the carpals, at the wrist area. The next one I show you is going to be a digitorum, and you'll see those tendons continue on into the fingers. So that's how you'll really be able to tell in a diagram which is which. So here's your flexor digitorum. See the tendons going all the way into the fingers this time. So that's what I was talking about. And now you can see many individual muscles in the arm. So all of these are flexor digitorum. So I'm just generalizing. If the tendon goes to the fingers, it's a digitorum. If the tendon goes to the wrist, it's a carpi. So you can see this is originating on the distal humerus. So furthest the point of attachment. It inserts on various phalanges. And what it does when it pulls those phalanges towards your arm, it causes your fingers to close. So it closes the hand. On the back of the arm, you have extensor digitorums, you have extensor carpes. The same principle applies. So you can see the extensor carpi ulnaris here. 
And notice that is going to stop here in the carpes, that tendon. So pay attention to the tendons. Here you have the digitorums going all the way into the back of the fingers, back of the phalanges. So we're starting here in the, in the humerus for either one, and then we're ending in the phalanges for the digitorums and in the carpes for the um, carpes, <laughs> flexor carpes or extensor carpes. And you can see in this case, we're extending the fingers. So again, when we have those tendons here in the fingers and we pull it toward our arm, it causes the hand to open. So it's kind of interesting. The muscles that control the clenching of the fist or the opening of the fist are on the front and back of the forearm. So we don't have really a lot of muscles to learn in the arm. In my class, Two out of my three hours got the lecture and one did not. So I now have presented it and hopefully they give it a watch and feel better about their knowledge of muscles of the arms. So have a good night. Thanks for listening.